hopefully the state's on fire or something again this summer. The uh, sun has this really strange orange glow to it. Um, I'm headed down to an appointment, but I'm gonna take the drone with me and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The air is like super weird and like orange and hazy, but you end up with this really cool glow from the sun. Oh man, it's a little bit worse than I thought out here today. Uh, I'm gonna have to check out the maps and see where the fires actually are, because, I mean, visibility is like maybe a half mile at the most. Yeah, I, uh, I went back inside to grab my portable nebulizer. Uh, with my lungs and the way this air is today, it's not a very good combination, so at least we're prepared now. There's the sun. You can just barely see it poking through the smoke. Isn't that crazy? By the way, this uh, new drone that I got, not exactly portable. It fills up the entire passenger seat, pretty much. I mean, the luggage does have wheels on it, but uh, I mean, it's cool and all, and it works for what it is, but I might have to invest in a smaller one just to carry around in my backpack because that's a little bit crazy. The exhaust seems to be rattling in this thing again. There's a mount down there, kind of by the floor, and uh, the weld keeps coming loose occasionally. absolutely insane but headed back now I've got plenty of uh, ionizers and air cleaners and stuff in the apartment to uh, keep the particulate level to a minimum man this orange glow is really strange I don't know if it shows up on camera I'll have to adjust it in post so it uh, it looks about like it does in real life but yeah the Sun's got this really weird color ionizer ozone generator air cleaner and fan forced air cleaner ionizer combo all right, I made it back. Um, so the cordless vacuum cleaner here, I think is in need of a little bit of repair. I was using it the other day and something happened and the top half of this handle is now pretty loose. I don't know if there was plastic clips or something in there that was holding it in place, but we're gonna take this screw out and see what we can do to make this thing better. One long screw. I'm assuming there's probably some wiring in here. Oh, what? Oh, it just has an electrical connector, weird. No wiring. That's actually pretty sweet. So you check it out. I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's just a connector that uh, this thing slides into. Seems like this top part's pretty solid. Make sure these screws are tight. Yeah, it looks like we're good there. Ah, okay. It's this portion of it that's a little bit loose. Uh, Alright, well, I don't, have, I don't foresee having to take this thing apart again. So, I'm going to go ahead and just put this back in here and add a whole lot of hot glue to keep it in place so it's not wobbling around anymore. Um, there's a little channel here I can kind of fill up with glue and then down in there, so... I think we're gonna go that route for now. It'll be ugly, but I don't want this thing flopping around like it has been. Let's see if I can work quickly so it doesn't dry. This is the uh, stuff that takes three minutes to set up, so it gives you a little bit more time to work with it at least. All right, and boom, there we go. Look at that glue oozing out of there. That's beautiful. <laughs> go ahead and add a little bit more here around the sides while it's still warm. We'll go ahead and stick this bolt back in. Here we go. Then in three and a half minutes, we should have a much more solid handle on this thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this vacuum cleaner is never gonna, never gonna fall apart again. And the nice thing is you can peel this off. If for some reason I do need to remove the handle, um, it is possible to uh, get this stuff off of here. But we're gonna let that set up for a while and should be good to go. Yeah, this stuff's completely set up now. I think, uh, yeah, I think we're good. It's nice and solid. 
No more jiggling around. All right, let's go vacuum some stuff. Back out here is storage. Uh, I'm gonna be working on one of the chairs I have here. It's that uh, purple Amy Systems one that I've got. It's been in a couple videos here and there, but it's not really something that I'm able to use on my own. So I'm gonna put it together. Uh, there's actually a viewer over on the other side of the country that I think this chair would work out really well for him. So I'm gonna work on getting this thing put back together, see if we can find the rest of the parts uh, that we need for it. And it's really hot out here, so just for now, I'm probably just gonna stick the batteries in it and uh, try to find a joystick to put on it for now and then we'll work on the rest of it later. But what I want to do, what I want to do is come over here every day and work on it for just a few minutes. While we're in this heat wave, it makes it really tricky to do anything, but I want to make some progress on this thing because I think you would really enjoy this chair. Okay, here's the chair. Let's see if we can pull it out of here. There we go. Yeah, so uh, I robbed the controller off of this for another project but I do have a controller we can put on there. I do need to find the front cover for this though. I think it's over in the other storage unit. And uh, obviously we're gonna need some armrests for this thing too. And I do have the back cover as well. For now, let's see if we can get some batteries in here. This is sort of a big Mo Mopar decal that I printed and put on there. All right, battery box. We get a tray, pieces of styrofoam for some reason, and looks like we have one connector. I don't see any more down in there. All right, uh, I'm going to find some wiring so we can uh, connect this thing up. If I remember correctly, this uses sort of a battery tray that has a pass through, but it had batteries in it that were not the right size and they weren't using the battery tray in this one. Actually, it's not really a tray, it's more of an insert that goes on top. Uh, this is the style of connector that it has, but we need to be able to plug the two batteries together and then plug them into the chair. Uh, I'm gonna have to dig around in some of these boxes here. I do have some random wiring here and there, but uh, I wanted to open this up and see what we're dealing with first. So let me see what I can find. I uh, found a controller that'll work. This is off my other C500 chair, and I think I actually robbed the controller from this chair for the C500, so it's sort of fitting that uh, we're going to <laughs> put the old one back in here. And then I found this little thing. Uh, this is designed to connect two batteries up to a single Anderson power connector. This is designed for NF22 batteries, but I think it should... Yeah, I'll, I'll probably just have to uh, cut off this front tab and then this should go over the battery and connect up okay, I believe. But this this has the wiring that we need because we have to uh, uh, connect the batteries up in series and then uh, plug it into the chair that way, so cool. Uh, these batteries are not the best in the world. They'll, they'll work for now, so at least I can get the thing powered up, get everything put together and make sure it's working properly. Then we can buy new batteries for it and uh, work on getting a chair shipped out eventually. But for now, uh, let's try and get these wired up. All right, we got our batteries in here. Uh, this chair will accept the group. Uh, it's, I think it's made for anything between 22s all the way up to group 24s. These are group 34s. Uh, they're just a little bit shorter and they have a flat top on them. But these go into this tray just fine and will slide into the chair. I just need to find some bolts now so we can get this stuff screwed into these batteries. I, uh, I don't know where those are though. All right, made some progress. Uh, I found, uh, I think some battery cables that are gonna work. And also I got the joystick swing away mount. I think for now we've made some progress. I need to find some hardware and bolts so I can connect up the batteries. And I'll probably come back out here tomorrow or the next day and see if we can dig through the other unit and try to find some of the parts that I know are somewhere. There's a little metal plate that mounts inside the chair and the controller mounts on that. I know I've seen it, but not in the last like year. So, um, I don't know. Might need to find a few things on eBay, but anyhow, or at least getting started. That's, that's my new goal is like when I have all these projects, 
is to just start doing something. Whether or not you're making any progress or large amounts of progress, anything is good. And at least you're going through the motions and starting things going. So anyways, I think we'll call that good for now. All right, it's time to install the power cutoff for the split in my eye. It's time to install the power cutoff on this van uh, for the secondary battery. It's got two batteries. There's one here for the engine and another one over here for the lift and everything. And yes, this van is very tall, um, but uh, this actually should be pretty easy to do. Oh, I didn't grab the switch. Let me get that real quick. I think we're ready to go. We have the cutoff switch here, and I also got a short length of battery cable, which is gonna be needed to connect this up. And it's actually gonna be pretty easy to do. This secondary battery over here connects, well, hang on, I'm slowly raising my chair. There we go. Uh, this battery here connects through this nice long cable all the way over here to this solenoid. So what I'm, gonna be, what I'm going to be able to do is just remove this cable from here, attach one side of it to this switch, and then attach this battery cable to the other side of the switch, and then reconnect that over here. This van has two isolated power systems. Uh, they used to charge through this little relay, but that one got sent to Melt Disney World, as you can see. Uh, probably because they were trying to charge an entire battery through a 30 amp relay. It might even be a 20 amp relay, but uh, no bueno. So I installed two 40 amp relays to uh, disperse the load and charging that battery, uh, it's not gonna take more than 80 amps. So anyways, these have been here for quite some time. What this solenoid here does is when you turn the key, it connects the secondary battery to the main battery so that if either one of these batteries are low, both of them are used to start the engine. And then everything else that powers the lift and everything else from that other battery leaves on this second wire back here. So we're just gonna pull this one off and put a switch in there. And I think it should be pretty straightforward. First though, I'm gonna have to do something about these battery terminals. This, this is not a proper situation here. I just had these old wheelchair batteries and I needed to make them work, so I just jammed these on here. What I'm gonna do is pull the bolt out and it's long enough to actually run through the center here. So let me grab some tools real quick and then we're gonna clean up both of these terminals and uh, make sure this is a better connection because right now, that uh, that's not acceptable. Okay, we've pulled the little bolt out of here. We should be able to spread these little tabs wide enough to get the terminal for the battery inside here. There we go, and let's see if this is long enough. I'm kind of doing this spur of the moment without the proper tools. Uh, ideally, you'd want to change out these terminals or get the proper batteries for this van, but uh, for now, this will work all right. I also do not have the eight millimeter socket that this requires at the moment. <laughs> hey, what do you know? I found a 5 16 end wrench, which is uh, close enough. So we can get this kind of tightened down here. Uh, we'll just have to call that tight enough for now until I can get my tools over here. Um, I'm gonna get the other side here uh, fixed now. To get these bolts to come out of here, they have little keeper tabs. So you have to kind of bend those out of the way before the bolts will come out somehow. All right, success, bolt removed. Now we just have to turn this sideways and jam it on there just like this one. Yeah, that's grungy looking. And now very carefully tighten it down because this is the positive terminal and everything's hot. So we don't want to touch the end of this wrench to anything metal, lest we turn this whole thing into an arc welder. Like I said, this is kind of a side of the road style repair here. This van's in cold storage for a little while, so I'm just gonna make it work with what I have available to me at the moment, which are two wheelchair batteries. Um, <coughs> but, uh, yeah. All right, that's nice and tight. Uh, now this battery is actually connected. This is the main one that controls the engine on the van. And this is the one that actually doesn't go dead. This one doesn't have a problem sitting around. Uh, so now we've got this part taken care of. Let's go ahead and get this wire off of here and get our switch installed. This is a keyed 300 amp battery disconnect switch. It's not designed to switch loads, but it's designed as a disconnect. So you wouldn't want to use this as any sort of load switch, but it'll work in this instance for what we're trying to do here. Although I'm just now realizing the lugs on this are very big. 
and I think, whoops, eh, just lost our bolts. Uh, yeah, so the lugs on that, I don't know if they're gonna fit. Let's see here. I managed to drop the um, nut and bolt for that down inside here. I'm gonna try and use the uh, magnet wand, see if I can retrieve them. It's always nice when you're randomly carrying around magnets. Check it out. <laughs> Ideally, you'd probably want to mount this on a panel or something, and it would be nice to access it like inside the grill or somewhere outside the vehicle, but we have a problem of water ingress. The switch is not waterproof, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mount it under the hood. It's a little bit more annoying because I'll have to open the driver's door, pop the hood, and then take the, or put the key in so it will, um, so it'll work, but in this case, I'm mounting it facing down so that water doesn't fill up this little hole here. But we've got it installed. This just goes in, turns on, and now our batteries will be connected. Well, once I reconnect it over there, but... And then when you want to uh, not have a drain, you just take this out and you're good to go. I'm gonna find some zip ties and probably just uh, attach this right here for now. Like I've said in the previous videos, um, this van's gonna be getting pretty much an overhaul of the entire front end and everything else. And a lot of these solenoids and stuff need to be replaced anyways, and this stuff all needs to be mounted on here properly. But for now, uh, this is gonna work, and it'll make it at least drivable, and we won't have to worry about the batteries constantly, get a, constantly going dead, because that's really bad for them. And uh, yeah, none of this is dangerous at all. It's just kind of a, it just makes it work, basically. Well, for now, I think this will work. It's. Uh, this, this isn't going anywhere. I'm not gonna be driving this van. Uh, today was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I just happened to be driving by and I had the cutoff switch with me. So I figured I'd stop and install it at least. Uh, I'm gonna grab a battery charger, plug this thing in, get the other battery charged up, and I think we'll just call it good for now. I'll come back over here in the next few days sometime with some zip ties and get this all tied up properly. And uh, I think that'll do it for now. In the meanwhile, we can go ahead and leave this key in here and uh, we're good to go. Yeah, as you can see, I still need to replace the driver's seat in this thing. This van has a lot of miles on it and it's worked for me, you know, pretty reliably for what I use it for. All right, we're good. Well, guess we'll uh, keep the extra key in here for now. It's so close. Yeah. Dang it. Guess I'm not gonna be able to put air in this tire for now. All right, we're uh, good to go. Got the thing parked now. We can take the key out. There we go. And our secondary battery is now disconnected. Should be preserved for next time I wanna drive this thing. Well, that was a nice little impromptu project. It's something I've been needing to do, and it just kinda happened. So, uh, yeah, we can check that one off the list.